Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. And welcome to the third of a series of food system talks. I'm Halia Yassir, UN Women Regional Director for Europe and Central Asia and co-chair of the Regional Issue-Based Coalition on Gender Equality. I'm delighted to be the moderator of the third food systems talk, focusing on rural women and girls in sustainable, resilient, and inclusive food systems jointly organized by the Issue-Based Coalition on Sustainable Food Systems and the Issue-Based Coalition on Gender Equality. The idea of the Food Systems Talks was launched last year by the Issue-Based Coalition on Sustainable Food Systems in the context of the UN Food Systems Summit to increase awareness on how food systems are interlinked in all three dimensions of sustainability and why a food systems transformation is absolutely necessary to achieve the goals of having a healthy people and a healthy planet. Today, we're keeping the momentum going on food systems transformation with a special angle, looking at the role of women and girls in reaching sustainable, resilient, and inclusive food systems. And this is an opportune moment, building on the energy galvanized action around the International Day of Rural Women across the Europe and Central Asia region and across the world. We want to raise awareness on the situation of women and girls living in rural areas across the region and their key role in achieving and contributing to food systems transformation. Enabling women to be equal partners with men in the development and use of agricultural technologies, land and water resources, in household production and consumption decisions, as well as in the formulation of policies are all essential for successfully transforming our food systems and creating climate resilience for all. To discuss these themes and more, we have a very special guest with us today. And I am absolutely delighted to introduce Her Excellency Frida Kriftsa, the Minister of Agricultural and Rural Development of Albania. A very warm welcome, Minister, and many thanks for being with us today. Frida Krivka is the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development of the Republic of Albania. Minister Frida Krivka completed her graduate studies with a Master in Business Administration from the University of Akron, Ohio, USA, in 2007. She holds a Bachelor's Degree in Business Administration from the Tirana University Faculty of Economics. Her career in public administration started with the position of General Director at the Albanian Agriculture and Rural Development Agency. In her prior positions, she worked as Country Director for Financial Services Voluntary Corps, funded by USAID. Internationally, she holds the presidency of the Standing Working Group of the Regional Rural Development Assembly in Southeast Europe, from November 2021. She was also the Vice President of the 33rd Session of FAO's Regional Conference for Europe that took place in May 2022, in Poland. We're honoured to have you with us, Minister, because we know you're a great supporter of rural women and girls that you recognize their important contributions and invaluable role in food security and sustainability of family and community life. As we all know, there are persistent structural barriers and discriminatory social norms that continue to constrain women's decision-making power and political participation in rural households and in rural communities. Women and girls in rural areas do not have equal access to productive resources and assets, to public services such as education and healthcare, to infrastructure, including water and sanitation, and many other areas. They contribute economically, but their labor remains largely invisible and unpaid, even as their workloads become increasingly heavy due to the outmigration of men. Globally, most gender and development indicators for which we actually have data reveal that rural women fare worse than rural men and worse than urban women. The data also shows us that they are disproportionately affected by the negative impacts of poverty, exclusion, and the effects of climate change. And all of this brings me to our first question. 
what should be done at the policy level for increasing women's access and rights to resources, services, information, and opportunities in food systems, especially in rural areas? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be with you and to discuss this very important uh, issue of um, uh, improving the conditions of rural women and uh, improving also our policy making in this regard. I do believe that economic empowerment of rural women provides a critical contribution for the development of agriculture and further modernization of the rural sector. The economic empowerment of rural women is also key for improved food security, nutrition, and sustainable livelihoods. Across the, gro- the globe, women led micro, small, and medium enterprises play a vital ro- role as job creators, driving female participation in the economy and boosting inclusive GDP growth. In Albania, the same. Although there is a loss in gross GDP due to the gap in participation by women entrepreneurs and rural women, there is progress made in terms of policymaking in favor of women access to rights, to resources, to leadership, services, information, access to finance. I can't hide it, and the very fact that I am in this uh, uh, government, it's an honor to be part of the most gender inclusive government that Albania has seen so far, with 13 out of 15 ministers being women. But it is also a responsibility to drive women economic empowerment further. The current legal and digital framework provides for equal access to governmental or public services for women and men. That's a start. The legal framework does not constitute any barriers to women's access to property or ownership, despite the difficult and the challenges that they may have. Charges to the legal uh, framework carried by the Albanian government with the support of UN women have strengthened women's access to property rights, ensuring not only ownership as defined by the law, but implementation of this right in the registration process. There is an increase in the participation of women and girls in the labor market, and there is increased access of women and men to several employment programs that the government has created. Uh, Only in the last three years, gender pay gap has decreased from 10.1 percentage of points in 2019 to 4% 0.5 0.5 percentage points in 2021, much, much lower than the EU average, obviously. To get back to your question, the Albanian government has recently approved uh, three major strategies, kind of the umbrella of where all of this is um, staying. The national strategy for gender equality of 2021 to 2030, the national strategy on agriculture and rural development that takes us from this year, the existing year, to 2027, and the national business and investment development strategy, all of them supporting policy actions focused on rural women and girls. As a matter of fact, gender equality, minority rights, vulnerable, vulnerable groups are embedded across the board in this key policy documents, alongside with the reformulated EU directive, the 54EC, 2006-54EC, on equal opportunities and treatments of equality of women and men in employment. Particularly, I'm going to speak a bit about the strategy that we developed on agriculture and rural development, which is in line with the EU roadmap for the plan of action for gender equality and women's empowerment for 2021-2025, including the role of women and girls in the green transition and digital transformation in the sectors covered by this strategy. We address the legal framework for land ownership as an equitable right for women and men without proper land ownership there can be much development happen right without the proper investments on it a gender sensitive approach in implementing 
When considering and evaluating applications for the EPAR rural development programs, for instance, EPAR, the pre-accession uh, uh, programs, where a higher number of points uh, and a, per a higher percentage of grant is provided to women-led entities applying for these instruments of pre-accession funds. Um, so we're incentivizing them economically. Two key measures we, am, we also aim to undertake under uh, the new strategy is to strengthen capacities of advisory services in the local level and responsible institutions at the central level for the provision of gender responsive services for rural to tourism, agribusiness and value chain development. Capacity buildings of groups of rural women youth, young girls for business skills development, access to finance, as well as specific joint actions, such as purchasing, quality control, marketing, branding, processing, food storages, standardization. Last but not least important, all these activities need to be monitored and evaluated uh, with some approach on gender analysis. The Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development in Albania is currently working to ensure gender disaggregated data that can be elaborated and obtained to provide and to produce evidence-based policy measures in the near future. It will be a cornerstone by assessing precisely our state of play and play as a ground for future policy making. Thank you very much, Minister. It's just one step, but it's a step, uh, one step at a time, sometimes a bit slow, but certainly steady and with a very clear objective in mind. No, it's very clear and congratulations on very, very impressive um, sort of advances that you have made in Albania. And also you've alluded to some very particularly important aspects, which is to make sure that there's proper investment. So there's this proper financing that does not remain on its commitments, but really can get implemented. And then also the accountability mechanism. So you've given us really key insights and we'll ask you to elaborate a little bit further on these promising examples of policies and interventions in Albania that are aiming at eliminating the barriers that women and girls in rural areas face. And in particular, knowing that food systems encompass a number of technical areas and involve a broad range of stakeholders in the policymaking processes, it would be wonderful to hear more from you in terms of which ministries and other stakeholders have been involved in the processes in Albania. Well, one of the key measures implemented by the Albanian government is support to access to finance for women farmers and women entrepreneurs. That's uh, through these direct funds that we provide to, uh, to them through gender sensitive budget allocations. The government of Albania is among the first, I would say, in Europe to implement a gender responsive budgeting in its midterm budget. Gender responsive budgeting has seen an exponential increase from a share of about 1% to the overall budgetary expenditure in the period of 2015 to 2017 to a share of 9% in the period of 21 to 23. And we're very happy to be one of the ministries that has paved the way for such an achievement. We not only have gender-based indicators in our budget allocations within the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, but our also implementing gender sensitive approach in the IPAR funding, as I mentioned earlier, which in 2000, um, uh, we already got an approval by, by European Union Commission that uh, the budget will improve and it will increase by 54% in the next program phase. So it's a substantial investment that will go to uh, the program and will further reinforce uh, capacities for this target group. Data shows also that our uh, 454 uh, beneficiaries thus far in this uh, EPART program, uh, about 117 of them, or roughly 25%, are women. And they are encouraging data uh, in a country where 
ownership of the property, which is the fundamental requisite to be able to invest in such program and to be able to benefit from such program is the main condition. So these are encouraging data as all of the legal entities contributing to Albania's GDP, about 24.1% or uh, roughly 43,724 active legal entities had a woman owner or administrator in 2021. And as out of 62,922 registered farmers in 2021, roughly 10.8% of them were women. These are data uh, which serve to promote women in entrepreneurial and farming undertaking, so they're not hiding behind their men. Uh, we particularly support them in handicrafts, manufacturing industry, but for investment value up to um, from 10,000 euros to 400,000 euros with a total grant of 65% for the production of uh, handicraft products, specialized equipment for small scale production, such as wood, textile processing, packaging, uh, sales, environment for handicraft producers, including exhibitions, marketing activities that they may need, etc. All the above, in fact, leads us intentionally to aim for future policy measures such as the leader approach, which is a familiar approach across Europe that has developed, uh, has been instrumental in developing the rural areas of uh, the European countries. Uh, we're in the process of um, accrediting the measure of uh, leader approach. We passed the law just recently on uh, creation of local action groups. Um, and we aim to use this as an instrument to promote and facilitate uh, these groups, especially uh, amongst the women in rural, rural areas, uh, as an instrument to empower them in drafting and developing local strategies that improve their living standards, that uh, also uh, help them to participate in the decision-making process in their local communities. Um, the creation and functionality of these local action groups consider the collaboration of different institutions, stakeholders, um, such as the ministry, municipalities, financial institutions, local associations, uh, as well as other development agencies as a crucial, crucial um, a role in further enhancing their participation in the, in, and their role, actually, in the society. So thank you very much, Minister, for giving us a very clear picture of the holistic approach that you're adopting in Albania. And again, we know very well the advances that Albania has made on gender responsive budgeting. And um, I think that your recommendation and looking at this area as part of a holistic approach and as a tool, gender responsive budgeting as a tool to advance specific objectives of ministries. And many thanks for the ministry's engagement in this important exercise in Albania. As, as we know, if we look at the current situation across the world and particularly in this region, we can see that actually there are multiple crises um, that are sort of um, creating new challenges and, and exacerbating existing ones. So looking at the current situation, uh, from your perspective, what are the food system's priorities in the context of these multiple crises and how these crises are particularly affecting rural women and girls? Uh, well, for Albania, uh, this is what we're currently facing, uh, the aggression of the Russian aggression in Ukraine and this Putin world is... Uh, not just the second uh, crisis, for us it's the third, because we started with an earthquake in 2019, which devastated the country uh, and left thousands of people outside uh, their homes. And then we entered the COVID phase where we were fighting with an unknown enemy. And then as soon as we were trying to get out of it, we we're facing a new, um, a new war. Uh, we are working to address food systems challenges in a multifaceted uh, manner. The geopolitical market situation after Russia's uh, unprovoked aggression in Ukraine dictates a special care for the safety of food products as one of the elements of our national security. It's a small country, but still 
uh, very uh, dependent on local production, but as well as on imports. Uh, beyond our constant efforts to increase the level of wheat reserve in the country and maintaining commercial uh, communication open with our regional partners and beyond for uh, continued supply. We have announced as one of um, our uh, support for the first time in direct subsidies for farmers, um, the wheat support. We had never thought of... Um, creating a measure uh, for production of wheat because Albania has not had it as a very strong uh, um, competitive advantage in terms of wheat. So we uh, seek to reduce the effects that uh, may come out of this price increase in international markets, improve on uh, uh, independence on uh, the wheat production. Uh, furthermore, we're aiming to continue uh, our support for diesel fuels and um, decreasing the effect of uh, the cost rises for the farmers. We allocated this year the biggest budget ever in direct support measures. Um, we obviously are suppo supporting, uh, uh, still keep pushing on uh, EPART program for investments in rural development. Uh, agro-tourism is a major one, rural tourism, which provides att attractive uh, employment for youth, especially so, and women as well. Uh, we expect it to be a driving economic recovery force, especially after the end of the, of the pandemic, based on a build back better strategy with a focus on increased uh, standardization and certification to serve the highest expectations of local consumers, local tourists, which have been increasing in uh, their desire to visit the, the local villages and remote areas of the country, because access to infrastructure and access to these uh, areas has improved drastically if we compare it to a few years ago. So you can move from one um, part of the country to another one easily in a few hours. Um, we've seen a major development due to the public policies that have supported rural tourism uh, in the past few years and have created a real potential for Albania rural areas. Uh, I can say that more than 55% of uh, these small businesses, agro-tourism business units operate in the country are run by women. And that's a great uh, uh, number. The sector is seen as the one that uh, development, uh, one that creates the biggest motors for rural development in the area. That's connecting uh, production, processing services dedicated to um, to this to this mechanism. I can just give you an example. One of uh, the best examples we have in the region of Leja. There are around 250 local farms, livestock only farms that produce only to serve one uh, rural tourism uh, establishment, which is a huge mechanism for uh, employment and economic benefit for, uh, for these, I'd say, rather difficult um, hidden gems of Albania. Um, Lastly, we are supporting the fisheries uh, as a major uh, priority for us. Uh, I'd like to emphasize that the fisheries sector is one of the food systems which has seen an increase uh, also in women employment in the recent years. Uh, although yet the number of women is employed in active fishing is uh, relatively small, um, but we've seen uh, we've seen a spike. Fishing plays an important socioeconomic role for coastal communities, uh, remote inland areas in terms of income generation, employment, food, as well as for the employment of women in fish processing factories. Roughly 90% of the 5,100 people that are employed in fish processing companies uh, currently are women. Uh, as a minister, but foremost as a member of the government, we seek to remain a constant support pillar for them uh, and uh, exponential role that they have in this food system. Uh, thank you very much. I think uh, you've touched on many aspects here, but I think you, you have really highlighted a couple of really important areas. As we know from the global perspective and even as 
an impact from the COVID-19 that women's employment, including self-employment as entrepreneurs, was severely hit, but that actually economic recovery from crises like COVID-19, like the economic impacts of that, uh, of the war in Ukraine, is only possible if we invest actually in women's entrepreneurship, including agripreneurship or agritourism, as you mentioned. And I think with that, we now have a small video clip from an agripreneur, a woman agripreneur, Natalia Efros from the Republic of Moldova, who is a wine producer. So let us hear from her and then I will come back to you, Minister, with perhaps a reflection. Numele meu este Natalia Efros și sunt din Republica Moldova. Sunt femeie din mediul rural, antreprenoare, care alături de familia sa dezvoltă o afacere în industria vinului. Producem vin artizanal și încercăm să încântăm clienții noștri cu produse create cu mult suflet. Gestionez o suprafață de 16 hectare teren agricol și fac asta cu pasiune în fiecare zi alături de alte femei din mediul rural care vin să muncească în plantația noastră. Cu ocazia Zilei Internaționale a Femeilor din Mediul Rural, vreau să zic că rolul acestora este unul covârșitor. Ele sunt catalizatoarele sectorului antreprenorial și industrial din țara noastră. Aceste femei, multe sau puține, fie că sunt antreprenoare sau sunt angajate, în cadrul întreprinderilor. Ele sunt promotoarele efortului și pasiunei, dedicației și muncii migăloase prin care fac multă uh, dedicație și precauție la detalii. Femeile din mediul rural au un rol primordial și ele trebuie să înțeleagă în primul rând acest lucru, deși sunt puse în condiții uneori de inegalitate de efort, pentru că pe lângă acest rol ele mai sunt și mame, sunt și soții, sunt și parte a comunităților și de multe ori fac extra efort neplătit, dar continuă să fie la fel de dedicate și de bune. Vreau să vă spun că rolul acestor femei devine din ce în ce mai important, pentru că numărul lor s-ar părea că scade, dar um, efortul este întotdeauna în creștere și ceea ce îmi doresc eu este ca aceste femei să înțeleagă că riscurile pot fi transformate în oportunități, că ele merită uh, mai multă încredere, validarea eforturilor lor să fie tot mai mare, să primească șansa uh, de a fi uh, creditate uh, de fapt și cu uh, admirație dar și cu resurse, pentru ca să devină catalizatoare în comunitățile lor de idei, catalizatoare de procese și catalizatoare de afaceri. Mai mult decât atât, femeile din mediul rural trebuie să se alinieze în cadrul unor scopuri sau pe niște cauze comune care să le facă mai puternice, să le facă mai unite, să se inspire unele pe altele și în așa mod să devină o forță și o voce de auzit, atât din partea comunităților din care fac parte, dar și din partea autorităților. Pentru că aceste femei sunt garantul ca economia mică și mijlocie să se dezvolte perpetu și constant, așa încât societatea să devină una durabilă și să trăiască într-un confort continuu. Cu această ocazie, le îndemn pe femei din mediul rural să își înțeleagă rolul, să și-l asume și să se unească într-o cauză comună, ca acest rol să fie auzit și înțeles de fiecare. Vă mulțumesc! So, very inspiring words from Natalia. And Minister, after listening to Natalia's story, what are your reflections in terms of how we can expand women's agency in order to enable innovative and profitable solutions for advancing women's entrepreneurships in food systems and making contributions to economic recovery? 
Well, thank you, Natalia. Very inspiring indeed. Um, for us, local food systems and short supply chains that connect farmers, small scale artisanal food producers in rural areas with consumers through direct marketing are important to achieve a wide range of economic, social, environmental benefits, which are considered attractive for women, for young farmers, for rural youth, which we want to see more and more to prefer to stay in these rural landscapes, to choose the village, to choose the uh, rural lifestyle rather than escape the difficulties of them um, for which they face day to day, but they provide so much value, not just economic, but cultural and um, um, content-wise to the, to the richness of our, uh, of our countries. Short supply chains are more uh, beneficial if they increase regional added value by contributing to stimulating local economic development cycles by linking agriculture also with other sectors, such as agritourism that I was mentioning earlier, earlier or rural tourism. Development of local markets, local fairs um, that bring out identity of these local communities that have so much to speak for and to integrate them with cultural activities, with local development initiatives. Uh, gender analysis of the various value chains conducted by the UN women demonstrated that women are substantive contributors to various value chains, providing authentic products for tourism. So there is a strong window of opportunity of advancing women's economic empowerment through the development of this key value chain. Um, with UN Women in Albania, we're actually currently working on implementing the business incubators approach to ensure identification and facilitation of women economic groups uh, formal activities, as well as capacity building on business skill development, as well as access to finance through specific joint actions such as purchasing, quality control, marketing, branding, food processing and storage. Uh, we believe that if we continue to do more of what we're doing, uh, by fostering a dialogue between women, rural women, women farmers, women entrepreneurs, civilized women, women ministers, women uh, mayors, as catalysts for common value chains, businesses and businesses cooperative, we can achieve uh, the success that is desired and that we all are working for. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think it's very clear from um, what you reflected on that we really need more of these kinds of approaches in terms of whole of government, whole of society, thinking whole of UN, which is the spirit of this kind of event, to bring all stakeholders, including private sector partners, into a conversation to create an enabling sort of ecosystem. Uh, particularly if we want to support er particular areas of work like entrepreneurship and women's entrepreneurship. And, and sadly, the time has passed very quickly, and we're now coming to the end of this very inspiring food systems talk. Um, and, but Minister Kritza, I would like to give you the final word to address our audience, which is multi-stakeholder. So if you have one key takeaway message or a call to action for stakeholders across the Europe and Central Asia region, what would that be? What would you like the listeners to take away with them from this talk? Well, um, we are very proud of our rural roots. We're very proud of what uh, the rural space provides. It what the richness of the cultural diversity it has. And we're very committed as a government, but also as a ministry to support this um, uh, possibility, this uh, potential that we have there in order to drive more economic uh, uh, empowerment for the women in these uh, local areas, but also to uh, support one, one another as women but also as policymakers. I am very grateful for this interview and I look forward to working with you and you and this uh, important matter. Thank you very much, Minister. Um, I think you've given 
everybody lots of food for thought i encourage everyone to find out more about the work that is happening in albania hope that it inspires you in your respective countries communities to do more and in the spirit of partnership bringing everyone around the table that needs to be around the table and putting women and girls at the center of our thinking not only as passive recipients but really as key agents for change thank you all for tuning in and look forward to the next uh, series in the series of talks thank you very much